We will talk today about the father of all the network observability tools. We will talk about the packet capture and Wireshark. So I prepared a small example for you today to demonstrate how easy it is to use packet capturing in container lab setting. We will deploy this small lab that we recently published, a Linux VLAN handling lab. The reason I chose this lab for this particular example is because it's easy to understand and intuitive to understand what's happening here. We will basically ping from client one to client two using different encapsulation modes on the on the client side. So we'll have no tagging and then some tagging and double tagging invo involved. And by showing this lab and using the Wireshark, we will clearly see what it is and how to use Container Lab and Wireshark together to get this ultimate visibility in your traffic. So first things first, we need to deploy the lab. What I will do is that I will just copy the URL of this public lab that's on GitHub, right? And I will go to my terminal and I will paste it in my machine, on my machine where, my, where I have Container Lab installed. And while Container Lab is busy deploying this lab, let's go and check the documentation that we have created for Wireshark capturing. So basically Wireshark and TCP dumping is very well explained on Container Lab website. But what I wanted to kind of emphasize here is that because Container Lab uses Linux primitives when it comes to the networking, uh, it's easy to capture traffic from all of the attachment points that you see here, that you see in your lab, for example. This picture shows different connection points with red dots where you can start sniffing traffic from. And as you can see, any interface is exposed to you. You can sniff on the interface that is attached to a network node, or maybe an interface that is attached to a client, or maybe a, a bridge itself, or a management interface on the network operating system. So basically, you are not limited to anything. You can sniff traffic from all of these points as easy as it can be. And there are two different modes that I would like to show you, uh, which are different in a way how you start your packet capture. We call these capture modes. And there are two modes, as I said there. A local capture is when you connect to the VM that you run your lab on, and then you start TCP dumping from the network namespace and the interface of the node. But then you see this ASCII flow that you get uh, on the VM, and it's not super easy, it's not super intuitive how to, to parse it, especially if there is quite a lot of traffic passing through. There is also a remote capture, which basically a combination of an SSH and the local mode. Basically, you use your laptop or a personal computer, and then you call the SSH command to connect to your node, and then you invoke this TCP dump or T sharp command to start sniffing traffic. But again, you will only see the ASCII flow that T sharp or TCP dump presents back at you. And this is not super useful when it comes to, you know, eyeballing the, the traffic flow. But we all know what tool does offer this ultimate visibility in the traffic flows. This is the Wireshark. So how do you use Wireshark with Container Lab? Well, this is actually quite simple because there is a small capture script that we created. This capture script does uh, a combination of three things, a local capture, a remote capture, and piping to Wireshark. Because if you break it all down to kind of smaller components, what you need to do is that you need to connect to the node that runs your labs. Then you need to start sniffing traffic from the interface of a particular node element, and then you want to pipe it all back to your machine to Wireshark. And because Wireshark can read from the standard input, this all kind of fits nicely together and plays in unison so that you will have your Wireshark immediately showing you the live traffic as it passes through the interfaces. So this particular script, I call it pick up sh. You can call it whatever. You can just copy paste this stuff and uh, save it on your host in the directory that's in your path so that you can call it from anywhere you are in your system. And it takes three arguments. The CLAB VM or the VM that runs your container lab is just the address of the VM that you use to run your container lab labs. The second argument is the node name. That is your lab node name that, that is running as part of the container lab topology. And the third one is the Linux interface that this particular lab element has or uses, right? In SO Linux case, the interfaces are named in this particular form, E1-1, E1-2, and so on and so forth. For Linux clients, it can be ETH1, ETH2, and for some other nodes, it can also be ETH1, ETH2, and so on and so forth. So basically just three arguments 
two of them are interchangeable. Or two of them are basically change uh, from lab to lab, from node to node. And the first one is basically static if you use the same VM for your, for your labs. Enough with the theory. Let's actually see how it all works based on the example that we, that we used. Coming back to my terminal. My lab is now deployed. I have four elements in my lab. There is two clients and there is uh, two, two SL Linux switches in between them. Now, if I go to my client and I log into the shell of the client one, I can see which interfaces I have here. And I have a bunch of them, merely because we wanted to use different encapsulation techniques, which we explain in the blog post. So there is the ETH1 interface that is uh, that is not using any VLANs. Uh, so it has this particular IP address, and the counterpart has dot two in the last octet. So I can ping 10, 1, 0, 2, and the untagged traffic will pass through my fabric or for, through my through my lab, and I should get a response back. And we will also use the ETH1.10 interface. That is the VLAN interface or tagged interface because we apply a tag of 10 to the frames egressing from the from this interface, and we will be able to see that flow with the Wireshark. So how do we do that? Now I'm switching to a tab where my host is. This is my Mac, which I'm recording from. So the PKSH script that we just looked at, it is now saved on my machine, and I use these three arguments. The dev box is the SSH name of my machine where I run my my SR Linux lab that we just deployed. I will start sniffing from the CLAB VLAN client one, and if we go back to this tab, this is actually this name. This is the client one node that we have in our lab. And what I did is I just copy pasted the name from the summary table that container lab showed me and used it here. And then I used the ETH1 interface from this particular node. Again, if I go back to the shell of the container of the client one container, this is the interface I'm about to start sniffing traffic from. So let's run this. Click and enter. And you see Wireshark is immediately spun up and I see the familiar Wireshark interface. There are no frames so far, but if I go back to my client and I say ping 10, 1, 0, 2, if I switch back to my Wireshark, you see what I see here? The exactly the, the ICP frames that I wanted to see here, they appear as the traffic is passing through the requests and replies. If I click on the request, I see that I do not have any VLAN tagging. I just have Ethernet frame and then the IP and ICMP protocols, but there is no tagging whatsoever. So I can stop the capture, save it for later investigation, but this is the task, task is done, right? We see the frames as they appear. Okay, so I will just close this, close this Wireshark capture. I don't need it anymore. What I wanted to show you is that now you can change the IP address and start pinging 10112. And that will use the ETH110 interface on my client one. And this interface is tagged. So if I start pinging, I see the ping is flowing. I can run my capture once again. And check that. Now my pings are coming or aggressing through ETH 1.0 interface. And hey, we have this nice dot one Q tag applied on the interface, just like solidifying that there are two different flows that we started with two different encapsulation. And Wireshark clearly shows that in my pickup capture. All right, sweet. So that is that is all nice and dandy. But that was just the Linux clients that we sniffed from. What if we want to sniff traffic from the actual network node? So I have these two SO Linux switches connected back together, right? So what I can do is that I can just change the name of the node that I have, and I have SRL1 in my lab, and the interface. So let's see, let, let it be E110, because that is the interface that connects two switches together. That is the inter-switch link, if you want to call it like that. So can I do that? Let's see. So Wireshark starts, and we immediately see those ping requests flowing on this link between two SRL switches, again, with with the tagging of 10 applied because we didn't stop the, capture, the ping flow on the clients. But yeah, if I go back to my uh, client, if I stop it here 
and go back to Wireshark, we see that the the flows the flow is has stopped and we do not see any new ICMP packets. So this basically shows you how easy it is to use this pickup sh script on your Linux machines, on your Mac machines, on your Windows machines when you use VSL and start capturing traffic from any node of your lab, from any interface on that lab. Oh, by the way, maybe just one more thing. The cool thing about the T-Shark that we use in the pickup shell script is that you can actually use multiple interface when you do the packet capture. So if I now close this guy here and go back to my shell, what I can say is that I can I would like to start capturing from I would like to start capturing from multiple interfaces. So I can say I want to uh, capture from interface E11 as well uh, and E110. So I will capture the frames on as they arrive to SQL1 switch and as they egress in the direction of the different switch. So that's definitely possible. You can just comma separate your interfaces. And if I run this one, you will see that I will have a packet capture from both sides. So if I go back and start the flow again, you will have this kind of duplicated or twice as many ICMP requests and replies because they are now captured from different interfaces. And if you take one reply here, it will say, I'm listening or I'm, I'm receiving this frame on interface E11 ID10. And if I switch to this reply, this will say on interface E110. So basically you have the visibility on the f for the frames on different interfaces, both on E11 and E110. So yeah, now that is all. Do use this pickup shell script. It's super easy to incorporate it into your workflows. It's just a shell script. You only need to install T Shark on your machine where Container Lab is running. No need to install T Shark on, on your network nodes or on your clients. Just the C Lab host that you use for your labs. Happy sniffing. See you later.